surrounds you. Feel the pull of the void. Grip yes, of the infinite.
Hey guys, what's up? Then here with a new video. Welcome to the Aragalis Fango Cultist Uber Build Guide for the 3.23 Affliction League. Small warning, this is an expensive setup. However, since this league everyone seems to be rich, I decided to make a video build guide for this end game version. Before we take a look at the character, if you enjoy this type of content, like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel, it helps out a lot. Also, we're getting close to 5000 subscribers, so thank you for the help and support so far. A lot of you guys have asked me if I have a Discord channel, so check the pinned comment, I've made one recently which should help you out a bit with some questions that you might have about the builds or regarding farming strategies. Quick build overview before we take a look at the gear, this is a pretty tanky character that's able to farm most mechanics on the Atlas skill tree while also having enough damage to take down Ubers. It's probably the best all-rounder build in the game right now, at least for casual players, since I've put quite a lot of work into quality of life features, speed, damage, survivability and I packaged everything in an almost full unique setup. Overall I'd give this build an 8 or 9 out of 10 all across the board, however please keep in mind that this build is a jack of all trades, master of none. It has really good clear speed but it's not tornado shot, it can take down ubers but it's not penance brand of dissipation and although it's a tanky it's not armor stacker tanky. With that out of the way let's take a quick look at the gear. Ok boys and this is the Arakalis Fang Occultist. We have an Arakalis Fang Dagger, of course we have a Squire Shield, Ancient Skull, really nice for extra damage for the spiders. We have an Ols Uprising, Charisma is allocated and this amulet is giving us haste has no reservation. Really important and really nice to have for mapping and also for some bosses. We're using Profane Proxy in which we have a Punishment Curse, this is to help us with some uh, reservation issues that we had last league we had to manually cast punishment i've improved the build it again this league <laughs> with the uh, profane proxy we have a grave mind which is really nice to summon our spiders and we also have a pair of uh, windscreen boots you can get some nice corruptions here some um, maximum life some movement speed maybe one extra endurance charge and you can also get some nice corruptions on the grave mind gloves this is an expensive setup as i've mentioned and i am using a mage blood this one has uh, three flasks and as you can see maximum life and malevolence aura effect. The implicits are not needed, just buy a mage blood, it's 80-90 divine right now, it's pretty cheap. This uh, setup is also using a chaperone's wrappings. Now, why exactly did I decide to change the brass dome for the shafts? Well, in case you guys noticed, we are really tanky, but sometimes, you know, we take a little bit of damage, we take a little bit of damage and then we're instantly dead. And it also took me quite a lot of time to figure out you know, why is this uh, happening. And it's because the build is relying a little bit on block chance and some energy shield and the chaos damage bypasses energy shield. With the shafts you're gonna notice that the character is a lot tankier, especially in mechanics like simulacrums. In the previous leagues, sometimes Kosis or Omniphobia were one-shotting me even from full HP. Now it's not that big of an issue anymore. If you have a mage blood, shafts is amazing. If you don't have a mage blood, Keep using the Brass Dome, it's a, a better item on the low medium budget setup. Let's take a quick look at the gems, we have a Multi Strike, Awaken Malefiz, Awaken Void Manipulation, Withering Touch, we have Awaken Minion Damage and we also have Awaken Melee Splash. Awaken Melee Splash is really nice for mapping and for some farming strategies, legions, expeditions, however for harvest or for uber bosses or for invitations, you're gonna swap out the Awaken Melee Splash for Awakened Unbound Element. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the gems. We have our Casual Channeling, the Spin to Win combo right here, Desecrate, Cyclone, Casual Channeling and we have a Flesh Offering. In the Profane Proxy, as I've mentioned before, we have this Punishment Curse. In the Chess Piece, we have a level 21 Determination, Tempest Shield, 2120, Cast when Damage Taken, Link to Molten Shield. We also have a Defiance Banner, this doesn't need to be linked to the Cast when Damage Taken and we also have Convocation. In the gloves we have our Curse Aura setup with the Awaken Blasphemy support, Despair and Temporal Chains and we also have an Enduring Cry which is really nice to open chests if you're farming Blights, if you're farming Expeditions or if you're farming Legions. In the boots we have our Desecrate, we have a Val Haze here, level 2020 if you have enough Dexterity can go lower if you have maybe 
some issues with figuring out your dexterity. We have a summon skitter bots and we have infernal legion. These two need to be linked if we want to summon the spiders counterbit. bit. Let's see how we can summon the spiders. This is the most important aspect when trying to play this build. You're gonna place the cursor on top of your character, double cast your desecrate and then you're gonna place your reading jar hollowed hybrid flask and as you can see we're able to summon 18 to 20 spiders. You can also summon the spiders with divine ire however I prefer this infernal legion summon skitter bots setup. Some of you have asked me why we're using Gravevine in this build since poison damage counts as the player's damage and the spiders are doing poison damage well we need the Gravevine if we want our infernal legion summon skitter bots to summon the spiders for us. Without these uh, three pieces right here you're not gonna be able to summon the spiders comfortably trust me i have played this build a lot of <laughs> leagues now and i am definitely enjoying the build a lot more with the infernal legion summon skitter bots and with the grave eye let's take a quick look at the flasks we have an instant life flask instant recovery when on low life with immunity to ignite and the remove burning when used we have a quartz flask which is giving us elemental resistances during effect. This is really nice and with a mage blast and a little bit of resistances on some cluster jewels and maybe on some ghastly jewels you're gonna cap out your resistances. We also have a granite flask of the armadillo. This is really nice and we also have quite a lot of armor even though we don't have the brass dome anymore. We still have around 34,000 armor and we also have a alchemist the quicksilver flask of the owl which is gonna give us curse immunity besides that we have our rating jar hallowed hybrid flask the most important flask when trying to play this build because without this one it's gonna be really hard to summon the spiders and it's also gonna be impossible to summon the spiders when fighting man bosses end game bosses uber bosses and the soul this build has some issues with the damage over time as you guys can see barely 75 life regeneration per second but this league we're using Enduring Eye which helps out a lot but you should also get a ring like this one, bleeding cannot be inflicted on you. This is a corruption that you can get on almost any ring, you're gonna find hundreds of these rings on the market right now but try to get one with some life, maybe some gears uh, resistance, maybe some elemental resistances, maybe some stats, bleeding cannot be inflicted on you is mandatory, besides that try to see what else you can get on this uh, corrupted ring. Quick look at the Pantheon, we're using Soul of the Brine King to give us a freeze immunity which is really nice and also some stun and block recovery and besides that we're going for Soul of Aberrath when mapping, most of my farming strategies as you've seen are using the Wrath of the Cosmos Searing Exarch Alter so we need Burning Ground immunity. When you're bossing or when you're uber bossing you're gonna go for Soul of Rislata which is gonna passively fill up the charges of your Rhythm Jar Hallowed Hybrid Flask. So let's see how this works, we're gonna take this right here and as you can see I'm gonna wait a little bit and as you can see it's gaining charges right 20 charges 31 charges right and this is how you can fill up your written jar flask when you're fighting end game bosses or maybe when you're fighting some invitations this is pretty much everything that I want to show you in the game now let's take a quick look at the POB okay boys and this is the POB first let's take a quick look at the config tab Guardian, Pinnacle Boss, Enemy on Low Life, Manually Input 15 Wither Stacks, you're gonna click on Endurance Charges, 4, you're gonna right here, you're gonna click on Have Used the Minion Skill Recently, and in the Custom Modifiers you're gonna include the Onslaught and you're also gonna add the Onslaught for the Minions manually, and then you're gonna come on the Skill section and you're gonna click on Including Full DPS, and you're gonna set the Spider Count to 20, and after you've done all these things, if you need to, rewatch this section of this video. And after you've done everything, you're gonna get your full DPS right here. Really important. But please keep in mind, there is also some conditional damage, right? So the enemy is not gonna always be on low life. And it does take a little bit of time uh, to get our poison to the max duration. So uh, we're gonna disable temporal chains. And uh, let's also disable the val haste since this is also conditional damage and as you guys can see right so we still have around 18 million dps and we can go up to 35 million dps after a few seconds and for map bosses or maybe some tougher enemies you're gonna click your val haste and you're gonna notice a huge a dps increase and it feels really nice when fighting over bosses right so if you don't know how to do these things rewatch this section and configure everything like i've shown you here now let's take a quick look at our passive skill tree and ascendancy, we are a level 100 occultist, let's see what we have here, 
Unholy Authority, Profane Bloom, Propane Bloom for the really nice explosions. We have a Void Beacon and we also have Withering Presence. Most of the damage of this build is coming from the Amanamos Geese and we also have some Ghastly Eye Jewels. You're gonna need a Ghastly Eye Jewel that gives you Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you. Really important since we also have really low life regen. So this is how we get Corrupted Blood immunity and with this ring this is how we get Bleeding immunity. And as I mentioned almost a full unique uh, setup. Besides that we're getting a lot of damage from the meta clusters. You're gonna need two large cluster jewels. They don't need to be 12 passives, but they do need to have minions deal 10% increased damage, added small passives also grant 3% increased attack and cast speed, and 35% increased effect. You need 3% and 35% to bump up the 3% to 4%. Really important, right? So don't get two with 3%, don't get 3% with 25% increased effect. I've seen a lot of POBs. Don't go for those large cluster jewels. 10% minions deal increased damage. 3% increased attack and cast speed. 35% increased effect. Now, this cluster jewel also has a 3% to chaos resistance and it's helping me out with capping my chaos resistance. And you can also get some elemental resistance. Maybe you need some attributes in case you're missing some strength, some dexterity to level up your ball haste and to aware your items. This is pretty much all that there is to know about the passive seal trick. Now I know that not all of you are level 100 so let's try to remove some points. Let's remove uh, these points here, another one here. We can also drop uh, this uh, small point and we also can drop this uh, life point right here and at level 94 maybe level 93. At level 93 you're gonna be able to assemble something really similar to my Arakali Swank uber version now uh, in this uh, video i'm gonna show you two pobs right so this is the first pob at 100 to 150 divines i'm gonna price check everything before i release this video so uh, check the pinned comment let's click on uber pinnacle boss and as you guys can see on the full dps configuration this is conditional damage also please keep in mind we have 10 million uber dps this is the second pob that i have prepared for you guys and we have our configuration tab here, Uber Pinnacle Boss, 17 million DPS. I think it's around 60 million non-Uber uh, DPS. What have I done here to almost double the damage of the Uber version? Well, a lot of things, so many things, right? So we have some uh, nice uh, cluster jewels that are going to give us more reservation, but they are 50 to 60 devices each. We have Enlightened 4 and we have moved most auras in the chess piece. We have removed the Infernal Legion and we have added Divine Ire. So we're also gonna remove the Grave Mind and we're gonna summon the Spiders with Divine Ire like we used to a few leagues ago. We have changed the Charm for one that gives us mana reservation efficiency of skills. We also have Awakened Multi Strike, 100 Divines guys, so expensive Awakened Multi. All Awakened Gems are level 6 and 20%. We have also fixed accuracy for ubers since we were at 90% in the previous POB. I have added malevolence and to add malevolence you're gonna need to improve the reservation a lot. And besides that we have added the different ring for bosses and we have changed the gloves for uber bosses. So let's take a quick look at the changes. We have our chase piece right here, enlighten and all the auras. So we have um, this charm right here which is giving us 12% increased mana reservation efficiency of uh, skills. We need this and we also have uh, these two uh, small cluster jewels uh, that also have 35% increased effect and one of them is with uncompromising and one of them is with mortifying aspect. Mortifying aspect gives us malevolence 50% increased mana reservation efficiency. Now what's the difference between these clusters and the ones that we had in the previous uber setup well these are 60 devices each because they also have the third line added small passive skills have 35 percent increased effect so you're not getting six percent increase mana reservation efficiency of skills you're getting a bit more than that i think 10 11 percent if i'm not mistaken All right so we need to change quite a lot of things if we want to add malevolence to the build and get more damage besides that pretty similar to the a setup that I've shown you at 10 million Uber, but please keep in mind these changes are 300 divines, an extra 300 divines. So this setup is close to 400, 450 
divines really really expensive we have also done a small change here to the um, fang plus a squire setup i decided to go with void manipulation this is more damage but in my opinion you should not go for void manipulation when mapping because you're not gonna do um, a lot of uh, physical damage you're barely gonna do any physical damage as you guys can see here I removed the Awakened Melee Fizz, which you should still keep for mapping, but when you're uber bossing, in my opinion, go for Void Manipulation, this is gonna give you more damage. Alright, so check the notes section, this is a pretty complicated setup and uh, you're gonna struggle a little bit to assemble this one and you're also probably gonna struggle a little bit to farm 500 Divine uh, to buy everything uh, that I've uh, uh, shown you here. We also have a different pair of gloves, this one is giving us a 29% increased damage for the minions and also has the implicit pinnacle atlas boss in your presence, minions deal 53% increased damage and we also have this ring right here. We don't have bleeding immunity anymore but we don't need bleeding immunity when we are uber bossing, right? We're getting a lot more damage with all of the changes that I've shown you here, really important, again check the notes section. But uh, should you go for this really high expensive setup? Well, in my opinion, you probably shouldn't. What you should do is go for the 10 million setup because on this setup you can also get spell suppression, guys, which is really nice. Now, how can we get spell suppression? Well, you're gonna need three charms with 45% in total spell suppression, 15% increased each, and you're also gonna go for a green nightmare instead of a red nightmare. And besides that, you can either drop the Gravevine Gloves and you're gonna add a pair of gloves with Spell Suppression to cap out your Spell Suppression or you can remove this Ghastly Eye Jewel, preferably not this one is, is giving you Corrupted Blood, but another one. Um, and you're gonna put this Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you somewhere else, let's say here. And you're gonna add a Megalomaniac which gives you some spell suppression and I think you're gonna be able to reach 98% spell suppression which is really nice but please keep in mind your block chance is gonna be a bit low right so in my opinion should you go for the 60 million dps setup well if you want to destroy ubers two times as fast compared to what you've seen in this video then go for the setup however I would say that the 10 million uber more balanced approach maybe with some spell suppression is probably a little bit better and uh, now back in the game because i need to mention something really important in case you guys don't know you can snapshot the damage on this build what exactly does that mean you're gonna summon the spiders with your arakali's fang plus squire setup right so q q and five and then you can weapon swap to aegis aurora and you're gonna get a lot more ehp extra energy shield and as you guys can see recover energy shield equal to two percent of armor when you block now should you do this well in my opinion if you have a mage blood if you have a shafts this setup has more than enough defenses for most farming strategies in the mapping showcase that i have shown you with legions you can check how my energy shield was looking and you're gonna notice that i was using only the squire plus fang setup we have 100k ehp it's more than enough guys mage blood is keeping us alive because it's giving us enough armor and we also have elemental resistances and we have some nice energy shield and we also have divine shield 100k ehp is more than enough for most farming strategies on the address skill tree however from time to time let's say that you're gonna encounter some really dangerous mechanics for example expeditions with the openheimer keystone you're gonna explode everything on the screen well it would probably be a good idea to summon the spiders you're gonna let's say detonate the explosives and then you're gonna weapon swap to Aegis Aurora to bump up your EHP. This is really nice but it's not needed for most farming strategies and I would say that 80% of the time this is how I am playing the build. This setup right here it's a walking simulator I summon my spiders and I walk. If I want a bit more movement speed I have shield charge here and the flame dash so I weapon swap in the map and as you guys can see right <laughs> really fast um, shield charges well, extremely fast shield charges guys but it's not needed if you want to be really active with this build you can but in my opinion what you should do 
summon with the square play the build like this if you feel that maybe your map is a bit difficult maybe you've rolled some minus mag resistances some reduced chance to block some reduced effect of non cursoras summon the spiders with uh, the squire and weapon swap to Aegis Aurora. So you've assembled the build, you know how to play it. What can you play on the Arakalis Fango cultist? You can farm a breaches, you can farm abysses, you can farm expeditions, you can farm a harvest, you can farm heist contracts, blueprints, and you can also go and farm heist a bit slow at 200-250 movement speed. However, it's more than enough to comfortably farm a heist. Uh, you can also farm mirrors of a delirium, you can farm blights, I farm so many blights on this build and it's so much fun, and you can also farm rituals. Um, you can farm a boss rush, you can farm a blighted maps, you can farm invitations, you can even farm uh, some ubers, some are gonna be a bit more difficult than others, I'm gonna put some uh, text on the screen uh, right now. And besides that, there are two mechanics that I want to talk about. First I want to talk about Ultimatum. Ultimatum is really dangerous guys and they're doing so much damage. The elemental damage is so high. The skulls, the lightning explosions, the cold explosions. So if you want to turn this build into an Ultimatum farmer, you're gonna have to go for full spell suppression with the charms, with the green nightmare and also with the Megalomania core, you're gonna change the gloves. Really important, do not attempt to farm Ultimatums without spell suppression. And besides that, is this build a good legion farmer? Well, it's a passable legion farmer. I would say, you know, B, B+, plus. it's okay. This is the loot that I managed to get from 50 maps legion dunes. I have made around 22-25 device profit per hour. Um, a lot of players have uh, scared me a little bit. They told me that this build can't farm legions. Well, it can't farm them perfectly, but it can clear around 80% of the legion and make 20 to 25 device profit per hour this league. So, you know, as I've said at the start of uh, this video, this build is a jack of all trades, master of none. However, I would say that it can do a lot of things. And um, there are some farming strategies that you probably shouldn't try to farm on this build. For example, the really high investment uh, setup uh, with uh, affliction. You can farm afflictions. However, the maps are too slow guys, I really don't enjoy farming Affliction with 5k, 6k, 7k juice. The loot per map is amazing, but if you're gonna take a look at my spreadsheets, the profit per hour goes down quite a lot. So, uh, something that you should probably do maybe for 50, 100 maps, or maybe you're gonna alternate between farming 50 maps with Affliction, long maps, 6, 7, 8 minutes, and then you're gonna go back to farming maps without Affliction, 50 maps. 3-4 minutes on average, which is what I mostly like to do with my farming strategies. And uh, something that I haven't mentioned, essences, can you farm them? Yes, of course you can farm essences in 316 maps uh, without any issues. You can also corrupt them, you can also farm the essence memories without any problems. So you can use this build to farm a lot of farming strategies. Check the pin comment, you have a huge spreadsheet there with farming strategies from this league, from the previous league, and if you uh, need to ask me in the comments below and I'll let you know if the farming strategy that you plan on using is good or not on the Arakalis Fang Occultist. Quite a lot of work went into making this video, help your boy out, drop a like and a sub. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm open to suggestions on how to further improve this build and I'm also open to suggestions on trying a different build, something casual friendly, mostly full unique items. I want to play something uh, different in the final month of the league, so if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I uh, hope this video helped you out a little bit, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!